Hello, this is Mr. Wathi, and I'm going to go through Lesson 5 of the Stencils Educator's Kit. Lesson 5, we're looking at artificial intelligence. So we're, we want our heroes to do more than just stand there and blink. Okay, so we want them to to have a little bit, uh, do something a little more exciting. So at the end of the, by the end of this uh, tutorial, you will know how to make your enemy follow you and avoid you and switch back and forth after so many seconds from one to the other. And you might think like, well, why would, why would I want him to switch back and forth? Why would I want him to avoid me? Well, you know, think of some games, um, maybe he's low on, on HP and he needs to defend or something like that or, or hide for a bit and then come out and attack you. So uh, there's different states that our enemies will be at and um, but first we want to just look at one at a time right before we get too ahead of ourselves so artificial intelligence just really quickly what is that well we want to write some code so that we can um, our enemy or whoever we're writing our, this uh, artificial intelligence for can make some decisions based on um, the current inputs pretty much that, that's pretty much it right so in this example that, we're, that we'll be creating our current inputs is position of our actor and who's making the decision on what what direction to move okay so enough about that let's get moving first thing we want to add and we okay add an enemy we want to open up actor type called en enemy and make it so he will kill the player when they're contacted. Awesome. Okay, so again, I, I s we have behaviors here and we can make a behavior here, um, but since we only have two actor types right now, I'll follow the tutorial on it as it says to, to go make some events here. Okay, so when I make an event, what kind of event do we want? Well, something that collision actor type collides with actor type. Okay, so we want self who's the enemy, right, we're under the enemy tab. When he hits, let's choose actor type, when he hits the hero, what do I want to happen? You want to kill him, all right? So actor, properties, kill. Kill who? Not self, the actor type, all right? So this one, first actor, refers to self, hero is actor type, okay? Pretty straightforward, let's test the game. And while we're doing that, we'll be um, taking a look at what else we need to do here. Okay, so next we want to follow the leader. So we want to make the enemy follow the hero. Okay, so uh, first let's just test this. We run over to our enemy and bam, dead. Awesome, beautiful. Exactly what we wanted. Love it. Okay, so here, hence it says use the push towards x, y direction block and push sharply at force of five. And then a couple of little you know, questions here. Uh, by the way, this PDF and the project files that you'll need, you can download just below on the link there um, in the comments of this video. Check it out. Okay, so it also says, you know what, what will you need for this? You're going to probably need the, the hero's position. And how do we communicate to the enemy what the hero's position is? Well, the hint here, use game attributes. Okay. So what do I want to happen? I want, what kind of event do I want? That's the first thing you got to think. Well, I want something that's always updating. Why updating? That, that's what means it's always happening. Because I want them to always be following. And it said we need to use the push actor gently. Again, if, if you couldn't, didn't know it was under motion, uh, you just touch it up right here. So push, and look at that. It comes right up. That's great. Okay, so we want to use this. Push self, because we're under enemy. Not gently, but sharply force of five. So we have to figure out what x, y direction do we want. Well we know it's not just going to be a plain old number, it's going to be changing all the time relative to the enemy's position relative to the hero's position. So we wanted us to make what? We wanted us to make some game attributes. Okay, so I'm going to go to game attribute, go create new attribute, and let's call it x position position. If I could spell position, that'd be nice. Position, there we go. Of hero. 
number, default zero, that looks great. Try it again, create new, we want the Y. Number, there we go, that looks good, okay, we have it. So, before I do anything here in the enemy events, I need to go to the hero event and assign or set the those um, those different attributes I just made. I need, I need to give them some values because right now they're sitting at zero and they're not going to change unless I tell them to change. So add events, I want something that's that's when updating, that's always happening. So I want to set, give a value to these game attributes. What do I want the value to be? Well, I want the exposition of the hero to be, well, the exposition of the hero. Right there. I want the Y to be the Y. There's a little drop down. We choose the Y. And now, whatever position, let's just open up the scene so we get a little, nice little visual. So right now, my heroes, if you look at the XY in the bottom, the bottom right, my XY is something like, uh, like 60 or 70 by 70, give or take. So he's at 70 by 70. Uh, but you know he'll move around and that updates for you that updates those game attributes which is great i'm done with my hero don't need him anymore let's close him down all right so i'm looking at my enemy so i have these two number values again these are just straight up numbers again at this position what are they well it's around 125 or 91 for x 125 for y so those are just straight up numbers. So if I put these in here, what do you think is going to happen? Think about it. Click that test button, button see, and think what's going to happen. Again, they're just numbers. They don't tell us anything. We haven't put in anything about the position of the the enemy. So yep, there are some there are some error, errors in what we're doing. He just buggers off to the the bottom right corner. So let's pull those out. What we need, go position. We need something to do with the position of self. By self, again, who do we mean? Enemy, because we're in the enemy tab. So we need some relation between one and the other. So we take a look at our level. Let's think about this. Say if our position, we have a big X right here for our enemy and a small X for our hero. So what relation can we have here? We want this, if we want the, the enemy to follow, we want a negative value. Negative value. But we want it to be in the right direction, right? Because as he gets closer, well, you know, we, we, yeah, we want, we want that value to change. So, think about how can you make, relate these two, that you'd end up with a negative number. You have a big value here, little value there. Well, maybe you want to minus, subtract the enemy's value, uh, position by the heroes. Okay. So we have enemies. Position. Which is big. No. Other way around. Okay. Maybe you want to subtract the hero's position by the enemy. Sorry about that. Got that backwards. Again, it's all about it's all about trying it out, right? Maybe you want to try out the other way first. If you don't believe me, try it out and see what you got. Okay, so we have X position minus X of enemies. So we have X position here. It's what? It's like 90 minus uh, you know 400. You end up with uh, negative 310 or something like that. So it's negative. That's what you want. Do, 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 do. So you think, yeah, what position is the enemy relative, sorry, what position is the hero, or you, relative to the enemy? And we look here and it works, uh, that works beautifully, it works beautifully. So he wants to move into that relative di direction, right? So you see he moves a slightly, slightly when uh, I'm slightly above him, but when I'm further down, move a little further. One thing you notice there, he was getting caught, he's getting caught in this wall. We see that okay. We've added some intelligence, but not that much. He's still uh, he's still pretty stupid, but he's only as smart as we make him. So that's part of the extra activity later on, uh, not in this video, but next we will look at how can we improve that that intelligence so he goes around the walls.
Okay, next we want to look at avoid. So this is just the opposite of what we're currently doing. They say first drag out the blocks, drag out the, um, the follow block, and uh, make your changes. Check this out. It's going to look very similar. So I'll put that there. So what do you think is going to be different though? Well, probably has to do with the XY direction. Well, instead of going towards, I want to go the other direction. So let me just guess. Maybe I just need to switch these around. Do, 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 do. Put them in the X, put them in the Y, and test. So again, the relative position. You know, say, I want to know what the relative position is. And uh, I want to get out. I want to go in the other direction. So we see right there, yes, that's good. Our enemy, he's moving around. That is great. That is great. Uh, one thing you might notice is that it's easy for him to get stuck in corners, and now there's no way out. So again, that's not very smart. If he's trying to avoid you, and he just buggers off to the corner, oh, it's just easy to attack him there. Too bad I die. Okay, so that is great. That was that was that was easy. Last part of our activity is to look at state switching. So state, what do I mean by state? Well, I'm just I just mean that uh, we have two states. We have avoid and we have follow. We have avoid, we have follow. So I'm just put the avoid on the bottom, follow up top right there, so it's nice and clear. And again, I, as I just showed you, we have animations, avoid and follow. Great. So let's take a look at our, our instructions here. So it says it wants to switch every 10 seconds. Uh, you'll want to use the switch animation block in the current animation block. Okay, so they want us to use these different animations here uh, for each of the different states. Just so it gives, it gives the, uh, the player a different visual when you're, you're, you're going one state to the other, which is good. Okay, uh, I think that's about it that we need from that. So switch animation, current animation. Um, if you don't know where it is, well, what do you do? You search current animation. There you go. And if you want to find in the palette, you can right click and go find in palette and it'll actually find it. Okay, it's under actor, it's under draw, and it made it, it was flashing there for you. That's great. And look at that, switch animations right underneath. That is beautiful. So what do I want to happen? Well, hmm, we know that we want to switch every 10 seconds. So maybe let's tackle that first. So that means we probably need to add another event, time one, every 10, every n seconds. And what is n going to be? Well, it's going to be 10. And again, we're going to need this guy. We're going to probably need that guy. And I'm going to use, guess we're going to need an if. Right. So after 10 seconds, if um, your current animation is equal to, if current animation is equal to, to what? Mm, follow. Sure, let's use this one because that's default. Doo -doo -doo. Let's go here. If current animation is equal to follow, and you just type it, in, you just type it in. Right. There's no way you can't drop down. I don't think you can drop down here and pick something. Can you? Animation? No, you can't, unfortunately. So, type in which, whichever one you, you want. If it equals to follow, then switch animation to what? Well, not to follow, to avoid. Alright, you just want to switch to the other one. And again, make sure you get your spelling right. If you spell it incorrectly, it will not work. And well, guess what we have on the bottom there? Well, we're going to use an otherwise, and I'm just going to hold an alt, click on this, copy it down, and switch to, well, switch to follow. So what does it say? Do every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, if my current animation is follow, so I currently look like this guy, switch your animation to avoid, to the blue guy. Otherwise, so if I that means otherwise means if this is false. So if my cur current animation is actually avoid, not follow, then I'm going to jump. Is, the code's going to jump down here, skip this part, jump down here, and switch you to back to follow. Great. So you know it's always good to label your events and everything here. So I'm going to call this uh, switch state enter. 
And this one here, just call this Polygon. We call this guy um, follow slash ooh, French. Follow there we go. Follow slash avoid. Okay. So my follow slash avoid, I want to use the if as well. Because I, I need to it all depends on what state I am in. So I'm gonna use that the same thing equals. So current if current animation of self of the enemy is let's start with follow. Ooh, make sure you spell that right. I want to use this code. That was a follow code if I remember correctly. And then otherwise use that other code. I actually didn't need to use this because I'm not switching in this follow the void state. So let's test this out. So again, I did a lot all at once before testing. I highly suggest that you test things out um, even before doing this code. Test out if this is working, you know. So you can count down to 10 seconds. Um, and if you look here, he's actually avoided me. So you see that I got those mixed up. And there he is. Again, he's also avoiding me. So if something is wacky, let's take a look. So he is switching. Right, I was going to say, sometimes you want to lower this down so that uh, I'm going to do three seconds. That way I don't have to wait so long when I'm testing. Credit animation equals follow. Push self gently. X of hero minus X of self. Y position of hero minus Y of self. Otherwise, doo -doo -doo. so I am a little confused because these are opposite. So let's just test this out one more time, and then I might just need to take a closer look. Let's see. Okay, yeah, he's running away from me, but which is funny because he runs away from me there. So he runs away from me both. So, so silly. So silly. Okay. Uh, just one second. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we see that he's always running away. So that means we're stuck on this otherwise. That means this is always false. And for some reason, I think maybe, I mean, it looks like I spelled it right. Yeah, I know I spelled follow. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to double click because I know this is working. This is working because the animation is changing. Double click there, go control C for copy. Go to this one here, double click, control V for paste. And now I'm going to test scan. Because uh, I might have had maybe a space or I, I don't know, something went wonky there, but I can just copy that directly. And uh, I'll know that it should have worked. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now it's working. Now it's working. Now he's going to avoid me. He's going to hide off to the corner. Now he's gonna chase me, he's gonna get stuck behind a wall, and now he's gonna avoid me. Okay, great, that's enough of that. Alright, so thank you for watching. We've done the basics of some artificial intelligence uh, coding for some enemies. And if you, uh, you know, I suggest that you continue on with some future videos. We'll be looking at these extra activities, how to mirror make our enemy mirror the hero. So if the hero moves left, the enemy moves right. Exciting. So exciting. Okay, and then the next two activities, is this improving on what we did before? Bug repellent, that's just so uh, our enemy doesn't get caught in the corners. Smart enemy, that's just so that he goes around those walls and doesn't get stuck there like an idiot. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Remember, artificial intelligence, it's uh, our guys only as, as intelligent as we make them to be. Alright, thanks. Cheers.